Hi everyone, Yasmin Vasson here, founder of Drake Holdings and the financial director of Lead Optimizers. Some time ago, about a year ago, I was pretty much on the verge of, I would say, burnout. Um, and funny enough, I went to a little slow market in Musenberg in Cape Town and I picked up this awesome book, In Praise of Slow, by a man called Carl Honore. And uh, I'm very honored today to, to have him on my show today. Thank you very much for joining me. Great to be here. It's, uh, it's quite funny uh, when, I, when I read the book, uh, one of the things while, while you were busy writing or publishing the book, you actually got a speeding ticket. So yeah. it's a nice, a nice ironic uh, conflict. Yeah, which just goes to show that I needed to write that book for my own sake, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me quickly, I, I know your story about uh, um, where it all began, um, standing in a queue in, at the airplane, um, uh, uh, waiting to, for your departure, reading an article about the one minute bedtime story. Could you just uh, tell my viewers where this whole slow movement and the book of Impressive Slow came from? Well, for me, it started with a very personal thing, which was I was at that moment, fast forwards, every moment of my day was a race against the clock. And I, I think like a lot of people, when we, you get stuck in roadrunner mode, it can be hard to break out of it. You just get, you get your head down and you just go faster and faster. And I, I was in that really awful place of every moment of my day, a race against the clock. And I, I realized that I'd lost my bearings and my compass when I started literally speed reading bedtime stories to my son. So my version of Snow White had three dwarfs, right? And, and so I read about this book in, in the queue at the airport, uh, the one minute bedtime story, Snow White in 60 seconds and caught myself actually thinking, this is a great idea. I need the book now, you know, Amazon drone delivery. But then, you know, the second question came to me and I thought, light bulb over the head. Wow, has it really come to this? Am I really in such a hurry, I'm prepared to fall off my little boy with a soundbite instead of a story at the end of the day. And that was, where, that was where everything kicked in for me. That was the moment of epiphany. I realized I just lost my, my mind and, and started investigating not only my own addiction to speed and busyness and distraction and multitasking, but everybody else's. And the outcome was, was a book that shows that there is another way, which is what people call slow. <laughs> You're also the global spokesperson and probably the, the person that started the whole slow, slow, um, uh, slow movement. Um, but this entrepreneur series is, I mean, like I said, it's also about startup entrepreneurs. But you are not just focusing, the slow movement is not just focusing on, uh, on slow in business, but all, all various aspects. Yeah, um, it, we can people read more about about this on your website. I know you have an online course as well, and even maybe tell us about your new new book that I think is a more updated version of um, of yeah. the impressive flow. Well, what what um, if if anyone wants to know anything about the the power and the the, the, the joy of slow. My website is a good place to start, so carlonray.com. But I want to make it very clear, especially to an entrepreneurial audience, that when we talk about slowing down, we don't mean doing everything at a snail's pace. That would be absurd, right? I, I'm not an extremist or a fundamentalist of slowness. I love speed. I'm a naturally fast person. I live in London. I love a good deadline. Faster is often better, but not always, right? And that's what this slow creed is all about. It's about doing things at the right speed, knowing that there are times to be fast, but there's a whole other range of speeds and rhythms and paces in between. It's about doing things not as fast as possible, but as well as possible, right? And, and the interesting thing, I think especially for entrepreneurs to hold on to now is that that message that slow has a role to play in the 21st century, that the best way to thrive in a fast world is sometimes to slow down. That message is coming not from, well, it, of course, it's always come from yoga retreats and meditation experts, but it's also coming from the big high tech companies. It's coming from the, the, the people who know most about business. The Economist magazine published a survey a little while ago looking at the business world. They came to a conclusion, which is a perfect a perfect summation of the slow philosophy. The Economist concluded with these words. It said, forget frantic acceleration. Mastering the clock of business means knowing when to be fast and when to be slow, right? And, and again, that's The Economist. It's not Buddhist Monthly or Acupuncture Weekly, right? It's the in-house Bible for, I'm guessing, many of your own listeners. And it's all about understanding when to be fast and when to be slow. So if you want to work out that recipe for yourself, a good place I say to start is my, my website. In Praise of Slow, at the very moment, I'm now writing a new preface for a fresh edition that's coming out next year, sort of looking at all of the things that have happened since the book first came out. 
you asked me about my new book. That is actually a new departure. The, the new book, my new book is going to be called Bolder, Making the Most of Our Longer Lives. And it's looking at the longevity revolution, the fact that people are living longer and what we can do to make the most of those extra years, you know, all the way from our 30s up, right? So it's something that an entrepreneur would find useful in a different sense, you know, maybe less so in the sense, of, well, no, actually, no, I'm, no, I think about it. There's a lot about the workplace as well, because many things improve, creativity, productivity, all those things can improve as we grow older if we do things right. So the book fits into my earlier works on slow in the sense that obviously as we grow older, some things do slow down, but that's not the end of the world, right? There's a lot of benefit to some of that slowness and there are many good things that come as we get older. So it, I'm, I'm sort of with the new book trying to say, that aging is not as awful as everybody makes it out to be, that it has a lot, a lot of upsides. I have a question. I'm going to almost jump to some of the questions I wanted to ask you a bit later on. But one of the questions would be um, any bad habits to, that entrepreneurs really need to stop. And one of the things I keep repeating in, in um, and I think I keep repeating it, is social media fasting for me to some sort of like some weeks don't even take off the apps of my phone mm -hmm. really really get me slowed down that I can be productive at, at work and, and my business um, and very it's, it's very clear from I mean your book has been written I think about 2007 somewhere um, and as even at that stage and it's even more applicable today mm -hmm. how social media has taken over our, our daily lives and it's not just business. It's I mean, social media do have its place, but it's still, um, I mean, it's it do have its place, but it, it takes up over our lives. And how do you manage? I mean, let, let's use that as a bad bad habit. But how do you manage social media? Well, I, I love social media and I love my smartphone, right? But but the latter has an off button, right? And it's it's about, again, it's sort of the same idea, the same principle of shifting back and forth between fast and slow. I use my smartphone and social media when I need the speed. And then when I don't need the speed, I just switch off, right? I have I sometimes use apps that block. You can use blocking apps off the grid or in moment. Um, I track my time and keep an eye look back over the week how much time I've spent on Facebook and sometimes just seeing it in black and white is enough to spur you to spend a little less time the next week. Um, I also use uh, uh, notifications so I can explain to people why I'm switching off. I don't just suddenly go dark because that can be unnerving and alienating to customers and colleagues and so on. You've got to explain why you're switching off that it, it makes going to make you a better partner, a better entrepreneur, a better business colleague. Uh, so I, I do, I have a sort of cocktail of things that I do that allow me to get the most out of my, my gadgets. And I'm not alone. I mean, that message is coming from Silicon Valley now where the, the former, uh, you know, top executives of, of some of the big companies are coming out and saying they wish they hadn't made the technology so addictive. And, you know, Apple, Instagram, Facebook, just in the last week or so have been bringing out new tools for users to manage their screen time, to spend less time plugged in, to encourage them to get away from the, the electronic coal face. So, you know, we are in one of those moments where the tectonic plates are shifting. The new tech came along. We went overboard. We knew and we know that we've gone overboard. We can all feel saturated by this stuff. And now we're finding ways gradually, personally and collectively to put speed limits on the information superhighway because it's what we need. We're human beings. We need moments of slowness. We need moments of quiet. And we need definitely many moments of not being distracted by updates from Snapchat. Just based on the slow movement, any uh, morning rituals and daily habits that you can advise to, to entrepreneurs? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's crucial if you can to start the day when you first wake up, don't reach for your phone first thing. It's something people very often do. Try and build in as much time as you can before you get out of that kind of sleep mode into you know, fast moving broadband. Uh, take 15 minutes before you look at your inbox or, or 30 if possible. I think it's useful also at that waking up moment before you hit the breakfast table to just do some kind of slow activity that, you know, could be meditation. It could be yoga or Pilates or something that just vaccinates you, inoculates you against the virus of hurry, puts you in a slower groove to start the day. And then a third suggestion I make wherever possible is, is to breakfast with other people, you know, to have it be a social experience. It doesn't have to be a four hour banquet or brunch, right? It could just be a 10 or 15 minutes where everybody's sitting around the table, 
with the phone switched off and, and just being together, breaking bread together as human beings have always done throughout human history. And if you can get any mix of those three tips, that's going to set you off on the right foot, whatever kind of entrepreneur you are. Um, obviously, you said you like a smartphone uh, in the sense of this slow movement as well. <laughs> it's turned off, though. <laughs> it's turned off. <laughs> well, well done. <laughs> um, any, any apps that, that really make sense to have on your smartphone? You know, the, the app that I've been finding most useful lately, and this may sound a little morbid, but I don't find it that way at all. It's called We Croak. It's a, an app that encourages you to think about death five times a day because in the, in the kind of Buddhist tradition, uh, there's an idea that if you think about death five times a day, it allows you, it helps you to focus on the moment and to enjoy and make the most of the life that you have, right? So you get sent a, uh, an update for our status ping from We Croak uh, five times a day and it, you just swipe left, the, the update says, do not forget, or remember, you are going to die, which sounds awful, but actually, if you take it in the right spirit, you swipe left, it takes you to a quote from some great thinker, Dostoevsky, or I, I don't know, Proust, about death or the bigger picture, and I find it amazingly helpful, actually. It very often takes me out of the sort of small tornado of distraction and freaking out about the small stuff, and let's me just step back for a moment and see the big picture and the long term and to understand that sure you've got to sweat the small stuff but the small stuff should not overtake you as it so often does and, and i find that i'm finding that really, it's quite surprising i i downloaded the app of course as part of my research for this book on aging and i didn't expect to leave it on my phone but it's there six I mean, two months later and I, I i welcome those those little status updates reminding me i'm going to die because it's kind of it just reminds me that that, that now is important and that's such a a key aspect of this slow revolution. It's, it's regaining the lost art of making the most of now, right? Because the problem is when you get stuck in fast forward, you're in several moments at once, you're worried about what's coming next, you're freaking about what happened before, and you're not present. And a big part of slowing down is being present. And, and I find that app is weirdly, <laughs> maybe even a slightly sinister way, <laughs> helpful for me to do that. It sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just lastly, um, two things. Uh, you busy, like I said, with your new book. When can can we expect that to be released? That you can get a hand on that. On sale date in the UK is the twenty seventh of December, so not long. Right. Looking forward to that. As am I. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> it's been a long, <laughs> long slog. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, where are you most active that people can follow you? I'm sorry, you broke up there. Um, my apologies. Um, I'm saying, where can people find you on social media? Oh, where right, yeah. Well, I'm on all the usual places, and, and I have a lot of fun out there talking to people about slowing down. I'm on um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, it's, and my handle on all of them is, is Carl Honoray. And my website, of course, as well, if anybody wants to get in touch direct or, or whatever. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time talking to me. And uh, I'm really looking forward to your book. And I've been reading your Embrace of Slow, I think about three or four times. And oh, wow. just, uh, just, just loving it. it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good talking Thank to you. Very much. Cheers. Take care.